and ask them if they'll tell you who their supplier is. Then you can contact the supplier and maybe buy... Hello, sir. I know you sell fencing material, but would you mind me going around you to your supplier and see if they'll sell me the fence material? I would really like to save money and cut you out of the transaction entirely. Let me know how that works. This reaction video, sponsored by Nationwide Industries, but Nationwide Industries is more than just a sponsor. I legitimately enjoy doing business with them, both with the Cornerstone 2 hinges and the Trident latch that we use on our pool gates or on their full line of chain link hardware. They're great people to work with. I appreciate them a lot. If you're looking for a supplier, you should check them out too. All right, guys, today's video is titled Chain Link Fence Secrets, how to buy 200% stronger fence for half the price. Boy, oh boy. I cannot wait for this one. If you'd like to watch the full video without the commentary, we'll link in the description below. If you are thinking of buying fencing supplies from Menards, Lowe's, or Home Depot, you should definitely watch this video to the end. It could save you a lot of money. Well, that's probably your first problem, is shopping for fence supplies at a big box store. There's a few problems with that, mainly price. They will sell you what they what you think is a good price, but then once you get looking into actual wire size, like the mesh, diamond size, that sort of thing, price per pound is you're paying a lot more for the material you'd buy there. So he's off to a good start. Don't shop at the big box stores. Let's see where he goes. So about a year ago, I built this fence around my backyard at our house. And it caught- Okay, black coated chain link looks like. Looks slick. All in all, I think it was about $3,000. And that surprised me. So the video was a year ago and he said it was a year prior. So two years ago, that was probably a decent price today. $3,000 would be a steal for that fence. I brought the black vinyl mesh. It was, you know, 50 foot long and four feet tall. And that only costed me like, I can't remember if it was, you know, $100 or maybe it was a little bit less than that. Probably a nine gauge finish. So 11 and a half or 12 gauge core. Uh, some pretty thin stuff. It's typically what you would find at a big box store. I don't know if that's specifically what he has. So where fencing companies get you is in the top rails and the line posts and the hardware. It costs so much more than you would think it would. When he says fencing companies, I think he's meaning these big box stores. And that's a thing. Chainlink Wire is one of their loss leaders. They will sell a wire at near cost to get you in to also buy the top rail, the fittings, and that sort of thing. As a fence company owner, I don't, we don't make a substantial amount of money on the top rail posts and fittings or the wire for that matter. This year, I installed a new fence, a very simple fence. There's two terminal posts, 10 line posts, each spaced about nine feet apart and about a hundred feet of fencing and then all the accompanying hardware. And I got thicker, here's the kicker. I got the fence posts and top rail were all thicker and heavier duty and I got them for cheaper by looking outside of Menards, outside of Lowe's, outside of Home Depot. To be fair, they're galvanized, not vinyl coated. You typically save a, a nice chunk of money by going galvanized over uh, vinyl coated. It'd be good to know like how heavy the posts actually were. Like, is he talking about going to a 0 0.065 from a 0.055 or, or maybe he's in a 20 or 40 weight. But if he's talking about saving a significant amount of money, I doubt that he's in a 40 weight. I really probably doubt he's in a 20 weight, but we'll see. Those posts are just so flimsy. I, I feel like if I were to jump my fence in the middle in between the line posts, me weighing about 170 pounds, I feel like I could literally deform and damage my top rails and my line posts. Like. My fence is just not that strong. It looks great, it has a nice paint job, but it is not that sturdy. To be fair, most box stores carry lightweight materials. It's typically a 0.055 wall thickness on a lot of the posts and the rail. So he's probably not wrong there. This fence that I just built, about a hundred foot of fencing, costed me only about five to $600 total. Plus the fence is a lot more durable. The gauge of steel they used is thicker. Now I'm not sure at all about this video. It said a hundred foot cost him around five or $600. So it only ran him five or $6 a foot for the material. I don't know. I'm not sure what he actually got for that money. Well, I don't know, we'll see. So a few weeks ago, I started calling around to these metal and steel manufacturing plants and being like, hey, do you guys sell any fencing supplies? And they're like, you know, no, no, I don't. Sorry, sir. So I called three of them. And on the third one, I called them and asked them and they're like, no, we, we don't. But there's actually a guy who does. He has a farm supply company. 
Dutchman Farm Supply. Shout out to Dutchman Farm Supply. So I called him and I asked him like, what are your prices? And he was telling me like line posts and how they're thicker and how they only cost like $5 a pop for these line posts. I'm like, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking I paid like $20 a pop to get the black coated line post at Menards. I don't know, $5 a post. Now I could tell you it's heavier, but does that make it heavier? At $5 a post for, you know, it's a four foot fence. So these are six or six and a half foot posts. I, I don't know. I'm wondering what he actually got. They they sold some like seriously heavy duty pipe. We're talking like schedule 20 pipe, schedule 40 pipe. Okay. Like you could get. So, so schedule 20 or 20 weight is seriously heavy duty. What did he get? It's got to be 065, right? What What do you guys think in the comments below? What did he get? I don't, I don't think he knows what he got, to be honest with you. So if you want to have a ridiculously strong kind of fence and you want to save money i would recommend looking outside of the big box stores i agree i would re recommend calling around to different steel manufacturing plants near nearby steel manufacturing plants typically don't sell to the public let's see where he's probably gonna recommend this farm store right and if you can find a farm supply company i would start with a fence company regardless of what market you're in this isn't me saying this because we sell retail and wholesale fence materials reach out to the fence companies first they'll know who sells quality material and this might be a regional thing i don't know but i'm thinking about the farm stores here for ag fence absolutely your barbed wire your t-post that sort of thing some round steel for bracing but um i don't know they actually carry fencing materials i wish i knew this was an option back a year ago when i spent nearly three thousand dollars to build a fence that looks nice sure it looks great but it's kind of flimsy well and he doesn't tell us how big his entire yard is he said he built 100 feet for he said five or six hundred dollars. There's no telling how long. I think he's comparing apples and oranges here. Another cool thing about going with the farm supply company that I went with was that I could order thicker gauge chain link for dirt cheap. Like we could get twice as heavy of steel for only about a dollar more per foot. Maybe this is the 200 percent, which 200 percent wouldn't be twice as much, but 100 percent more would be twice. Anyway, so if he's got nine gauge finish, let's call it 12 gauge uh, core, whatever chain link he got probably isn't twice as heavy, much less 200%. So if I wanted to have the 100 feet of fencing be nine gauge instead of 11 gauge wire, and nine gauge is like, you know, practically indestructible. It's like commercial grade, right? Nine gauge is not 200% more than than 11 gauge. Actually, hold one. I'll tell you exactly how much more it is. All right, and we're back. Let's talk about real quick, the thickness of chain link wire and specifically 11 and a half, 11 gauge and nine gauge wire. He's referencing 11 gauge versus nine gauge, which I will admit nine gauge is heavier than 11 gauge. Just thinking back to the video he showed of his fence, I doubt seriously it's nine gauge. It could be, it could be a weird angle or something. Well, let's just talk about the thicknesses of the wire. So the three standards in fencing, 11 and a half, 11 and nine. 11 and a half gauge is gonna mic out at like a 0 0.1130. 11 gauge is gonna be a 0 0.1160. Nine gauge is gonna be a 0 0.1440. And I don't know what if that's what this title is referencing, the 200%, which he said 200% is double or something. I, I'm a fence guy, I'm not great at math, but I don't think that checks out. Nine gauge isn't, anywhere near twice as thick as 11 gauge. So you're stepping up from a wire that would mic out at a 0.113 up to a 0 0.1440. Granted, thicker, but not twice. And certainly not 200% more. That would only cost me about $100 extra. Now, if I go to Menards, if you go to Menards, you can see to get six foot nine gauge wire, just 50 feet of that costs about $300. Well, yeah, he's also looking at six foot tall. Judging by his fence, it's probably a four foot tall fence. But that may not have illustrated the point he's trying to make. And if you want to save even more money, you might consider going to the, you know, the, the farm supply company or whatever company sells fencing and ask them if they'll tell you who their supplier is. Then you can contact the supplier and maybe buy... Hello, sir. I know you sell fencing material. But would you mind me going around you to your supplier and see if they'll sell me the fence material? I would really like to save money and cut you out of the transaction entirely. Let me know how that works.
What do you guys think about this uh, advice? How to buy 200% stronger fence for half the price? I don't know if that's uh, realistic. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Guys, until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.